Good day everybody, this is Misha Kudrashev and this is a Dynamo video tutorial session 1 uh, getting your first subtomogram averaging using Dynamo. Uh, if you don't have Dynamo yet you can go to dynamo-em.org and go under downloads and get Dynamo. Uh, I already have it here and I will be using it from the MATLAB window. Uh, I have a folder where I have nothing but the folder uh, with the particles and I need to run my uh, Dynamo activate script to start to start with. Uh, this will tell MATLAB where all the Dynamo functions are stored. Uh, so in the folder, in this folder particles I only have uh, uh, 20 MRC files which is a thermosome in different orientations. Uh, uh, in well this is uh, how you would store your tomograms. Uh, and the first thing we need to do, we need to convert them to the uh, format that Dynamo would understand it. Uh, for this we need to type in Dynamo and it will open us a, a very general uh, 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 like window with all the graphical user interfaces that Dynamo has. You can always plan play with the font size to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, the interface we would need now is data format. Uh, it requires as an input the uh, pattern of a file name which is in our case particles uh, slash thermo underscore star which numerates uh, the names and dot mrc I press enter and it found 20 particles uh, uh, that uh, follow this pattern uh, so Dynamo likes to operate with the EM format uh, so we would need to to convert uh, particles from MRC to the AM format and it also needs the output folder for the our particles which I'll call particles dynamo. Press enter and click proceed. Okay, that's it. It converted us our particles to the dynamo format. This is how it looks like. Particles dynamo. Uh, it numerates them particle one and according to the tag with five uh, numbers uh, after the particle. Uh, Okay, so we're happy, and then we can start our project manager, which is uh, yeah, which is basically the main in, uh, main command window of Dynamo, in where you set up all your iteration uh, parameters. Uh, it looks scary because it's designed for uh, complicated projects where you need a lot of flexibility, but it actually is much simpler than it looks like. Uh, you have three basic modules here, which is your project files, where you put all the uh, masks and particles and templates and the table that contains alignment parameters. Uh, there is a, a large module with the iterations that we will go to, and then finally what we will also need is the environment in which you run your project in the end. Uh, we'll get to it. So. To start with, we need to give our project a name. I like to call it dron1, two, three, four, fives. D stands for Dynamo, Dynamo run. And we need to start by giving the particles to the, to the adding the particles to the project. That's it. Uh, that's easy. We press enter, and it says folder Dynamo particles contains 20 particles with side length of 64 pixels. Uh, now we need to initialize this. Uh, fields uh, with the mask because Dynamo would need a mask to align the particles to the average. We need to come up with some initial reference, and we need to come up with with an initial table that is required for every project. Table contains metadata about each of the particles, including uh, how, uh, which angles and uh, uh, translations you need to apply on the particles, on each particle to align it to the average in the end of every iterations. Uh, yes, so we don't have any of this, but there is a graphical user interface to create uh, all the starting parameters. It's called tools for creation of seed files under seeds. So we need to specify the size, which is 64. And the first thing we do, we generate the table, we, uh, we click here, we initialize uh, our rotations and translations with zeros, pretty much. Uh, so generated our uh, a table for us over here. Uh, yeah, so next thing we can do is we can generate the initial reference. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our particles and rotate them in all different random 
uh, orientations and apply well you can apply random or zero shifts yes so we're creating the template everything you asked Dynamo to do also will be displayed in the MATLAB window and there is also a little display window in every graphical user interface of Dynamo. So yeah, uh, we have the, our reference ready, we can generate the mask. There is a more complicated uh, graphical user interface to make complex masks with geometrical features, but here is just an ellipsoid and since our particles are 64 by 64 by 64, uh, we would probably input the semi-axis of the ellipsoid to be 25, 25, 25. Uh, Create mask, create it. So there is classification mask in Dynamo and Fourier mask, but we will, uh, these are advanced features, you can read about it later, but we can just initialize them uh, with the uh, default values, right? Okay, so we have all this, we can return to graphical user interface. Uh, and now, well, let's look at the particles. To look at the particles, Dynamo uh, has a few, uh, f uh, a few ways to do this, like, an easy DD browse uh, interface to look at it. Let's use it. Let's type in DD DD browse in, in your MATLAB window. It would ask you for for the data, which is the particle fo folder. Say particles Dynamo. Press enter. It found it, and it also wants the table, but we don't have it, so we delete it, and press enter. And we can look at our particles. It loads them. Yeah, so this is the thermosome, it's generated synthetically. I didn't acquire it, it has a missing wedge uh, and it has a, s a little, little bit of noise. So missing wedge uh, in Dynamo is assumed to be usually in the y direction. We can take a look at the particles in y direction. Yeah, so you see this is how the typical missing wedge looks like. Okay, so we're happy with our 20 particles. Let's get to uh, to the iteration parameters, so this big uh, set of numbers that we need to run our Dynamo projects. Each line is uh, is a run of uh, that contains a few iterations. You can s vary this number. Uh, the number of references you may need uh, more than just one reference. You can read about this later, uh, and let's say under classification or gold standard FSC processing. Uh, so here is the angles that you are going to scan. We will scan the full range of angles uh, with a 45 degree step. Uh, Fourier uh, filters uh, on every particle are given in Fourier pixels. So since our particles are 64 by 64 by 64, the Nyquist is 32. So and then 16 Fourier pixels is half a Nyquist. Symmetry is C1. We can put all sort of different symmetries. Uh, you have help. Uh, for every of the columns, you can always read it. Yeah, so uh, Dynamo can do different number, different symmetries like C, whatever symmetry, helical symmetries, hexahedral symmetries. Uh, we don't have, we, we will not assume any symmetry here. So this is the dimension of the project. So our particles are 64 voxels, and we can set them up to be this way. But what we can also do, we can set them to 32. Uh, Voxels for the first round of iterations when we do global scanning without when and our reference is not very good, uh, and this will speed up the processing by by quite a lot. Next uh, columns is the refine parameters. So you have your 45 degrees, but what Dynamo uh, can let you do is to uh, when it is to go lower in your ref in your angle uh, search uh, when it finds the maximum it will divide it will refine it by a factor of two and it will do it six times but we don't need really six I, I like to put it to three so it will do three rounds of refinement uh, dividing 45 by two which would eventually increase our effective sampling in angular sampling to roughly five degrees uh, important and really nice feature that you can limit your shifts in Dynamo. There is also two ways of limiting the shifts you can read over here. Uh, type 1 limits the shifts from the center of the particle cube and type 2 limits the shifts uh, from the previous estimation of the particle position. So we don't have any estimation of the particle position so far so we will limit the shifts uh, from the center of the cube let's say with 5 voxels. Uh, Yes, so 
everything is that you want uh, to look at you can either click in here or there, like in, with a little question mark or you can also just point your mou mouse and it will give you some some information uh, threshold is very important uh, you will need to tell Dynamo which particles you need to uh, add to the average after every iterations if you want to add all the particles that is set here uh, or not so there is a few types of threshold uh, the one that we will use is type 5 uh, this is the threshold ranges between 0 and 1 in the sets of with a fraction of particles so we we'll say type 5 and 0 0.5 means that 50% of particles would contribute to the average yes that was pretty easy for the first round the sec uh, the first round we did the global search and for the second round let's make put two more iterations with the local search uh, we start we'll scan uh, 45 degrees with 15 uh, degrees step also in the axial direction and we'll do it with the 64 uh, uh, like on the non bin volumes everything else stays the same so let's go to the environment uh, this is a few ways how you can run your Dynamo project uh, the very simple one is to run it in your MATLAB window uh, Yes, so you can select MATLAB, but however we will run it on our system GPU, on our multi-GPU machine, and we, ne we would need to specify the number of graphical processing units, you would need to ask your system administrator for this, if you don't know it yourself, or you can run it on clusters, on, cluster G on clusters of GPU, on MATLAB C GPU. Uh, yes, so it's very flexible in uh, in the ways uh, in in the architectures you can run it for. Okay, so that's it. You saved, and then you you need to click the unfold button. Uh, the actual unfold button generates the executable that you will eventually run, and it takes a bit of time, but after this is it's done. The execution script is ready for ex for execution. Uh, so we go to our multi GPU machine and then we just run it. Do you run one? Yes, here we go. And it starts the iterations. Yes. Uh, in the beginning of every iteration it tells you w what it's doing and then sets up uh, particles to different processors if you specify the few GPUs, in this case we did uh, I specified three uh, GPUs, number 0, 2 and 3 uh, this runs fairly fast uh, at every s step of your iteration you can actually monitor the progress by clicking check last so you see and uh, it will output you in the Dynamo uh, window how many particles it has already aligned and actually already the first iteration is almost done uh, and we can look at the result of the first iteration uh, you can also always write dv status uh, in your MATLAB win window right so it says last complete iteration 1 in the next iteration 2 0 particles are yet processed. So, and then y you can have a few ways to look at your uh, averages. So, this is, uh, yeah, this is your average for the iteration zero. It's just a shapeless blob. Basically, that's our initial reference, just random orientations. However, in the iteration one, you pro will probably have a little bit of information. Oh, yeah, that's where. So, there is already some shape and then we, c we will use the query language of Dynamo to access the database entry which is the average uh, of the iteration 1 for this we will type in ddb duron1 average minus v and it will show us the yes yeah, so it, would, it will show us the average so this is the average after iteration number one and this is a fairly simple viewer so you see that after one iteration it already gave us uh, a fairly structured uh, volume 
this all of course happens because we have very high signal to noise ratio if you had very low signal to noise ratio you would have to run much more much more iterations so this is iteration number one however I see that our dynamo already completed uh, iteration number two uh, sorry yes and, and then we can display the new result of our iteration and you see that it actually has already improved quite a while and this is all uh, without very fine refinement and this is all done by the, on a volume that has a size of 32 so it's on, on our beamed particles uh, yes so for every iteration you can also look at the Fourier shell correlation this is just uh, Fourier shell correlation between two halves of the data set so okay okay it has an overfitting over here because we don't have any noise but yeah so you can say that you want to look at the Fourier shell correlation for all the iterations click here and then you see that actually your resolution where you want to look at it, it actually improves and I did one more iteration so let's look at it again and you see that the structure has improved even further up. so uh, it will do another iteration of refinement but basically you see that getting structures with Dynamo is fairly easy uh, we'll have more of the tutorials if you're interested please uh, write comments to this video what else you would want to uh, look at and uh, if you have any questions then go to uh, Dynamo AM and uh, read uh, documentation over here there is quite a lot of different documentation that Daniel Castiano wrote uh, it, it's all tutorials with uh, with PDFs where you go step by step and uh, learn new features of Dynamo it's about pretty much everything or write us an email if you, if you have problems have a nice day